Now, the trade du jour lately has been the Japanese yen against almost everything else. The currency gained against all 16 most actively traded currencies last week as investors dumped assets funded by Japanese loans. Steve Rawls is a currency strategist at CFC Seymour. He joins me now to talk about just what's going on. I mean, uh, how long has it been? Two, three years, people have been predicting the end of the yen carry trade. Are we seeing it finally after all that time? No, I don't, I don't think so. Right now we're seeing the results of sort of the subprime crisis in the U.S. and the mm. whole risk aversion. Uh, what's going to end the carry trade is when the Japanese finally increase their interest rates to a more normal rate, which we don't see happening for quite some time here. Um, and even this week, we should see inflation numbers continue to be in the deflationary levels. So Bank of Japan, they've been wanting to increase rates since, what, last March, I guess it is, and mm. they've only increased them twice. So. That's going to be tricky, isn't it? I mean, particularly if the U.S. economy is suffering, that means Japanese exporters suffer. That means the economy as a whole suffers. So, exactly, the rates are going to be very difficult to do. Exactly, exactly. So we don't see the Japanese rates moving up at any time soon. So at the end of the day, next year and the year after, you're still going to be able to borrow in Japanese yen and mm -hmm. buy high-yielding Aussie dollars or New Zealand dollars or, or whatever else is out Does there. Does that mean we may be close to a, uh, a top for the uh, uh, yen at the moment? I mean, we're at a, a 100 and. Uh, 8.6. I mean, it's, uh, the yen's weaker by about a third of 1% already today. Yeah, I, I think we're coming close to that because I think what's going to happen again is we're going to move back to fundamentals and that's strictly on the, the I mean, the, the Japanese yen is moving not on its own fundamentals, it's moving on mm. other issues. So once that comes back into play, we'll, we'll see the, the yen uh, fall back a little bit here. So still expect to see the yen to be the major carry trade uh, mm. in 2008. Well, what kind of level for dollar yen do you think? I, I'm still seeing above uh, 115. I think it might push back to 117. Uh, Over what period of time? Over the next couple of months here. Mm, so, okay. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're reading a report today that uh, a new favorite for the carry trade is the U.S. dollar. People are basically buying U.S. dollars and then selling them in exchange for uh, anything that offers a high interest rate, the Aussie, the, uh, the pound, and so on and so on. Are you seeing a lot of that happening in the market? I, it is happening a little bit, but uh, I, th I think that the U.S. dollar is going to remain a, a strong currency and uh, I just think that, you know, coming back to what I was discussing earlier, just fundamentally, um, with the U.S. rates uh, falling uh, across the board with the 10-year now yield below 4%, mm -hmm. it, it is showing signs of that. But uh, I think that uh, with this strong U.S. economy, we're seeing consumer strength stronger than expected on Friday. Mm -hmm. um, Overall, I, I think that the growth is going to remain strong in the U.S. So dollar, euro, oh, euro, dollar, to say, buy euro buys a dollar forty-eight and a third or so. I mean, uh, is it going to break one fifty? Do you think anytime soon? It, it, it could, it could this week if we get any more financial mm -hmm. industry uh, information. But uh, I think overall, the the news this week will be hawkish. I think that we'll see revision in GDP could be close to five percent and. Uh, then next week we'll focus on the job numbers, which I think will continue to be strong. So at the end of the day, everybody's talking about the recession possibilities in the U.S., but I think that if we focus on the consumer, we saw it last Friday, the resilience of the U.S. consumer is a theme for the past 15 years, and I think we'll see it uh, prevail once again here. Okay. Now what about the Australian dollar? We talked about uh, it. Uh, it has out unwound a little bit as some of these carry trades have come off. The Aussies have uh, fallen back against the U.S. dollar. It's up today. We've got a new government. We've also got a potential bidding war for uh, Rio Tinto. The, uh, the uh, uh, Chinese sovereign investment fund may uh, contest the bid by BHP Bulletin. Uh, do you see further strength for the Aussie? But very much so. I think that's right now my biggest short-term bet, and strictly on inf interest rate differentials. So look for more interest rate hikes. Uh, inflation is going to remain. Uh, the new government is the, the Labour government, which is going to be continue to spend, so we sh should see more inflationary pressures come through with political promises, so at the end of the day, look for more inflation and higher rates, so. Okay, of course, Kevin Rudd said he wouldn't spend as much as John Howard was going to spend. Yeah, yeah he did, but he's still going to spend. <laughs> <laughs> he's still got uh, tax cuts in the works as yeah. well. Uh, and uh, on, uh, obviously also boosting Australian dollar crude oil prices or commodity prices generally. Uh, what about the Canadian dollar? Uh, same, good short-term bet? Uh, Canadian dollar, uh, not so much. I think that inflationary uh, pressures are not what they were, so the hawker statements that we've seen for the past six months are starting to come down, and Canadians are very concerned about uh, their, just running their economy with uh, currency above the U.S., so we're seeing the authorities talk down the Canadian dollar, and we expect that to continue as manufacturing sector is still such a dominant play for mm -hmm. the Canadian dollar, not so much the commodity play, so 
look for uh, with next move by the Bank of Canada to be a cut. So look mm -hmm. for uh, move to the other side of parity pretty soon here. Okay. Now, um, the, the French President Nicolas Sarkozy is in China. The ECB President Jean-Claude Trichet will be heading to China this week. Both with the same thoughts on their minds. Yeah. Get that you are higher. Are they going to get anything? No, they'll get some discussion, but I don't think we'll see anything. We, we, we saw some talk at the, at the end of last week about uh, potentially winding another ban, but at the end of the day, the Chinese won. It's a story about evolution. It's not a story of revolution. They're not going to listen to Europe. They're not going to listen to the U.S. about what they want to do for their own domestic needs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I don't expect to see any major headlines. So they won't do it because they're being pressured from outside, but economically, do they need to let the U.S. strengthen faster? Oh, potentially, yeah, for, for sure. And the, just strictly on the inflation front, because no matter what they do on the monetary side for tightening regulations, it's not going to produce more eggs, is it? So, yes. by by having uh, increase their uh, their uh, currency a little bit, it's going to help with the inflation rates a little bit. So then that will calm down some of the domestic fears. And okay. All right. Well, let's watch, Steve. Thank you very much. Okay. Coming on again, Steve Rolls, currency strategist at CFC Seymour.